what would you say that distinction is between Christianity, Islam, or mm. Jesus and Muhammad? Huge. There's a planetary difference between the two. And uh, again, such a misunderstanding that there's a uniformity in Miss Islam and therefore it attracts them, my goodness me. Uh, within the next generation after the succession story, the emergence of the Sunnis and the Shias. And then you've got the Ahmadiyyas, you've got the Sufis, you've got the Druze, you've got the uh, Alawites. You know, they're all sects. Islam is as um, multifarious in its expression as the so-called denominations or abominations that we can see. It is simply not true that Islam is monolithic. But let me issue a disclaimer right from the beginning. When I talk about Islam, it's one thing. When I talk about Muslims, it's another thing. Wait, I'm sorry, real quick. What is monolithic? Monolithic meaning all saying the same thing. Okay. It's just the same story. Same. It's just simply not true. There's a lot of diversities within them. The whole idea of the difference between the Shias and the Sunnis is the case of succession. You know, was it really uh, the custom of Muhammad and the Hadith, or was it Ali yeah. who really uh, yes. was the progenitor of Shias? And so they even have different festivals and yeah. celebrate it. That's exactly what's going on right as we speak. Yeah. The main force of Sunnah in Saudi uh, over against the Shia in, in, in Iran. Mm. Now, one of my colleagues, um, uh, Nabil Qureshi, is a Muslim convert. Mm. Nabil comes from an Ahmadiyya background. Their Ahmadiyya with methodology was much more rationalistic and debate-oriented and so on. Mm. Why did he leave Pakistan? I talked to his father, who's still a Muslim. I said, why did he leave Pakistan and come to the United States? Persecution. Mm. Persecution mm. of uh, the Ahmadiyyas mm. by the Muslims in Pakistan. Mm. So he comes to the United States to escape persecution from an Islamic mm. culture. He joins the Navy here and for over 20 years has been in the U.S. Navy. Now tell me, which worldview has shown him more benevolence and kindness? His own worldview of Islam, mm. where he was threatened, or here the the world living under the Judeo Christian orb and under its blessings, and they not only welcome him into the country, they put him in the Pentagon. He's working in the U.S. <laughs> Navy. That alone tells you the world of a difference with which we, we live. And so when they say we don't really follow Muhammad, I'm not quite sure what they mean. Uh, they have to believe in him because the Quran is his only miracle, they say. So the right, the, the revelation and the recitation of the Quran came from him. So when they say we don't believe in him, what are they saying? They don't believe in the Quran? If they don't believe in the Quran, then they're, they're really not believing in Islam. They are creating their own sect in the process. He was given that revelation, and in that revelation, the last words of the Quran, really, before before he died, before Muhammad died, perish the Jews and the Christians, there shall be no two faiths in Arabia. The last words of Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. World of a difference between the two philosophies and the two ways of thinking. Are there peaceful Muslims in this world? Absolutely. I grew up in India. I grew up in a Muslim community. Just across the road was entirely Muslim. I had my, the, my captain of the cricket team, Sultan Ahmed, was a Muslim. Were we, were we getting along? Of course, peaceful. But is Islam itself a peaceful Ooh. religion? That is yeah. precisely what is happening right now. They are killing each other because of this dissension as to whether Surah 5 and the other surahs are calling for the extermination of others. Where did beheading first start? It started after the Battle of Badr where they were ordered to do some beheadings. Oh. So, you know, eh, are, there, are there peaceful Muslims in this world? Of course, and I oh. know them. I speak in these countries. Is Islam itself oh. a peaceful religion? Oh. They are disagreed amongst themselves on this, and they had better settle that peacefully, or the more violent one will win out and make a point. So I say to, that, I say to them, what do I think of Islam? Islam came about five to six hundred years after Jesus, okay? They're, they're, theirs is the only history, contra Greek, contra Roman, contra pagan, mm. contra Jewish, mm. contra Christian historians. Mm. They are, theirs is the only belief that says Jesus never died on the cross. Mm. Whose history backs who here? Mm. And so they deny the crucifixion and the death of Jesus. Thallus, the Greek historian, Tacitus, the Roman historian, 
Josephus, the Jewish historian, you go right down the line of historians of that day. Jesus was crucified and died. Mm. And then the story of the resurrection mm. that emerges. Who did it come from? It came from Jewish and Greek converts. Mm. When they saw the resurrected Jesus, it transformed everything mm. for them. Eleven out of the twelve disciples died a martyr's death. Muhammad died buried. Jesus crucified, rose again. Now, the resurrection is so phenomenal, and I literally mean that word phenomenal. There's a phenomenon to it. <laughs> Jesus didn't just rise again ideationally or spiritually. He predicted his resurrection bodily. <laughs> now, that's a falsifiable claim if it never happened. <laughs> if, I, if you were to say to me, Ravi, you know, uh, I'm going to die in three days and then I'm going to rise again. And I say, how am I going to know that, Emmanuel? You say, well, you know, you may see my body, but believe I'm, I'm gone out of there. But if you say to me, you're going to see me bodily rise again. You're giving me some concrete empirical evidence for the resurrection. Mm. And that's what Jesus gave. If he were a charlatan, just like Muhammad's journey to Jerusalem, his wife says, he, you know, he was lying next to me, right next to me. I don't know what he's talking about. Well, he spiritually went to Jerusalem. He said, how do you falsify that? Mm. There's no concrete body of evidence to yeah. falsify. Jesus claimed the bodily resurrection, which is quite remarkable. The teaching of Jesus and Muhammad are poles apart. You ask an average Muslim, do you know you're going to be in paradise? He'll say no. Mm -hmm. My good deeds will have to outweigh my bad deeds. You ask a genuine follower of Jesus, mm -hmm. Are you going to be in heaven? Yes. How do you know that? The grace of Jesus Christ mm. and his forgiveness doesn't give me a license to live any way I want. It gives me the love and the knowledge and the hope that my Savior forgives me and grants me the grace of eternal life. Mm. They are poles apart in the means and the ends to salvation. Let me give you a stunning illustration mm. of this. I was talking to a man in Israel who is involved in picking up evidence for suicide bombers. Mm. And he told me, he's not a Christian man, he's from the Jewish faith. He looked at me and he said, Mr. Zacharias, you're a very bright man. No, intelligent man, he said. He said, let me tell you something you don't know. He said, one thing you and I agree on, that our faith ultimately wants to lead us to communion with God. Am I right? I said, okay, I'll grant you that. Mm -hmm. He said, when a suicide bomber's body is picked up, most of them will wear a lead girdle around the midsection to protect that which they want to use when they get in paradise. He said, it's a physical religion, a material religion, we are completely different in our faith mm. to each other. So what I say to you, is there a difference? Mm. Yes. Jesus. Are we commanded to love them who disagree with us? Yes. Are we commanded to interact with grace and courtesy? Yes. Are there peace-loving people in that belief system? Yes. But is the belief itself peaceable? They themselves don't agree on that. And that's why we are seeing the problem in the Middle East mm. today. Mm.